MG Studio presents Hobby Tips. In this episode, I'll be talking about dynamic orc skin tones. For those of you who follow my craft on Facebook or Google+, you might remember back when I painted all those Stonehaven half-orc miniatures. When painting these up, I wanted to represent a broad range of skin tones, an orcish chorus of color. But to tie it all together, I simply used a common base coat, Reaper's Twilight Blue. I'm not suggesting that you have to use Twilight Blue. That's just what I used. And when you choose a color, the only thing I'd like to suggest is that you choose a color that's dark. For instance, with Man Flesh, I usually like to go with a dark reddish brown. Uh, but something like Twilight Blue is about the brightest that I would go. Let's go ahead and get on with it. I'm going to start with Reaper Stone Gray uh, for the Gray Orcs. A noble and sturdy race of orc. <laughs> you have to have fun with it. With a clean, dry brush, I like to start by marking off the sections of the face. Uh, the upper lip, the brows, you know, the lower lip and chin, the forehead, the ears. With those sections partitioned off, I like to then blend it down into the base coat. And to do that, I just load a little bit of paint onto a damp brush. And from there, you can highlight however you wish. Uh, I actually chose, I believe, Aged Bone to highlight with. Next up, I'm using Reaper's Pale Lichen to paint up the pale green skin dork. And honestly, I chose this color on a whim. It's good to sort of explore what you might find. Just pick something that you want it normally, and then go with it. Any lighter color than your base coat will do the trick. This combination of twilight blue bottom coat with a pale lichen top coat really makes for a cool skinned orc. Using Reaper's tanned leather in combination with the twilight blue makes for a very interesting, dynamic, olive skinned orc. When the blue tones of the twilight blue come through that top layer of the yellow tones of the tanned leather, it's, uh, it combines to make that classic green-skinned orc color. When it's necessary to complement the top layer from the base coat in this way, I usually start off with a more damp brush when loading my paint. This enables me to build up that color slowly and softly. I'm sure you've noticed that I've prepped the fire as a light source. I'll be coupling that with an OSL effect. I'll be painting over some of the skin, but it'll be worth it. For the last study in orcish skin tones, I'll be using Reaper's Tanned Skin. This will make for kind of a Caucasian orc. When I was working on these, it was at this point that I realized that I could probably pick any color, and it could be interesting. But when choosing a combination of base coat and top coat, the higher the contrasting colors, uh, the softer you really want it to look. This can be a constant battle, but if you just build it up slowly, like I always say, uh, things will work out for you. But whatever you do, don't get caught up in the blend. You need those sharp lines as well, those defining characteristics. This adds dimension to the miniature itself, where there's a subtle change in topology, you can actually bring those characteristics out and emphasize them. Thanks for joining me on this study of dynamic orc skin tones. If you'd like to see more videos, just give me a subscribe. It truly motivates me. And if I've inspired you, you should definitely check out my Facebook page or my Google Plus page. I try to post shots of my works in progress as often as possible. I promise you I won't meddle you up with painting doctrines. The, you have to do this, and you must do that. My focus is more on technique. The how-tos and the why-fors is my business. I consider my work more of an artistic study. And if I may be so bold, I'd like to think of myself as the people's painter. As I don't use sable brushes, I don't use no fancy airbrush, I, uh, I just use the normal stuff. Paint, brush, water, miniature. What more do you need? As always, hone your craft.